Hey Aries, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February of 2022. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this reading and this video finds you well, yeah? So if you're new here, hi, my name is Eric. It is so wonderful to meet you. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and if you're new and haven't done so already, please consider subscribing, yeah? Definitely leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know how this resonates for you. Um, if you enjoyed this reading, if you would just like to share it or help the YouTube algorithm, smash the like button, yes? Uh, so this reading, just like last month, is going to be split into two sections. The first is going to be speaking to Aries rising. And when I'm speaking to Aries rising using the astrology, I will be approaching it from the sidereal astrology practice, okay? Not mainstream or tropical. Um, <clears throat> if you're new, never seen your sidereal chart before, you're interested in it, send me an email, let me know. I would be happy to provide it to you free of charge. If you would like to get a personal reading with me, I am available for that. All of the information can be found in the description box below, including some of the readings that I offer and uh, my email address. So read through that, shoot me an email, let me know you'd like to have a personal reading, whether that be astrology or tarot, I would be very happy to provide to, to set you up there. If you would like some extra content from me through out the month. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I highly recommend and suggest that you check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below as well. All right. So let's get started here. Hi, Aries. Aries rising. Yes. So this month, it's looking like, feeling like there is a window of opportunity that is opening up for you. And this is directly connected to what we were talking about for you last month, for the month of January. So if you haven't seen the January reading, I highly recommend you go back and watch because it is very much directly related to what's going on for you this month. We're progressing through the energies as the planets progress through the system. Yes? Yes. So last month, Aries, we were talking about, um, I just heard you making a character switch, which is interesting because that's what Cancer's reading was titled, um, a character adjustment. For you, Aries, that seems, it feels like that's very much the same thing. That's what's going on here. However, from January now into February, also going into March, um, you have a strong 10th house focus. And the 10th house represents your career, uh, your job, your finances, whatnot, whatever. Um, it also represents, it, this is your house of public opinion. So this is how people or the community or society perceives of you, your place within the hierarchy of society even. Um, and for January, Aries, there was a feeling of you kind of, desiring to shift i'm hearing mainly desiring to shift your your the per, the publics or the, the communities or the the uh, or like society's um image of you or you are being influenced or were being influenced that month to accept going forward with some sort of shift that would potentially change the way people see you the way people view you um, could also be influencing a change in your career trajectory, what it is you do for a job. Some of you may be working on getting a new job at this point. And the big thing about last month for you, Aries, was that there was an energy here of you really not giving two flying Fs, potentially, or at least needing to not give two Fs <laughs> about how people perceive of you. And this is definitely connected to the shift in values we have all been experiencing while Venus has been retrograde. Now, Venus did go direct in the end of January, all right? So as of February 1st, moving into February, Venus is has already stationed direct. However, this has been, over the course of Venus's retrograde, this has been shifting our values what it is we truly value, how we align with certain values, certain values that we held in the past may not align with us at all anymore, okay? So Aries, for February, oh, and um, 
sidebar there is some work happening in the background i don't know if you can hear the power tools working but they're doing things so hopefully that's not too the, that that's not distracting and that that's not bleeding into the the audio here okay anyway so aries with all of that said stepping into february for you the title that i got is here comes a window of opportunity here comes that opportunity to make those changes that you have been guided to make or you have been forced into or pushed towards or whatever. Now, there is a bit of a feeling of resistance and even reluctance to make these changes, Aries. Um, and first, that would potentially be, well, the first part, let, actually, with, let me get into the chart here. So what you have in front of you, Aries, is the chart for Aries rising for January, I'm sorry, not January, for February of 2022. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of energy in your ninth house and in your 10th house. However, for you specifically, Aries, I feel like even though there's a ton of energy in your ninth house here, where Venus has been retrograde, where Mars currently is, uh, where Mercury is stationing direct. Mercury starts its retrograde motion for you in your 10th house, moving back into your ninth. You have Pluto in your ninth house, okay? You have a lot of energy in your ninth house, but for you really, Aries, I feel like the focus of all of this energy is really in 10th house situations for you. So again, your public image, how society perceives of you, your place, your role within society, also your career, okay? What it is you really work towards, what it is you strive towards. Now, like I said, the window of opportunity is coming through for you this month in order to really move forward with certain changes you have been influenced or guided towards making. However, the difficulty here for you, Aries, I feel like Saturn, which is right here in your 10th house, Sorry, Saturn is here in your 10th house, right? And Saturn is kind of creating a little bit of a roadblock for you, Aries. Um, so what I was feeling here for you is that there is resistance. I definitely feel some resistance for you as you are, as I was reading through this chart for you. Um, hold on. Oh, well, I do want to say if you want to step into the life of, of the public image or the career that it is you truly want, you have to make this change during this time. Now, the resistance, the, the resistance is kind of coming from the roadblock that I feel Saturn is putting into, into place for you. There is a little bit of, yeah, okay, see, you have the fool that's just come out here for you, Aries. Very much your type of energy, uh, uh, cardinal energy, Aries, the fool. Um, but you're really about to embark on a brand new adventure, okay? And Saturn has kind of set up this roadblock here for you because it feels like he he's not going to allow you to progress forward in the way that you're being guided to, in the way that you're being led to. For some of you, you're feeling like you're being forced to do this, but quite honestly, Aries, I definitely feel like this is in direct alignment with the change or the shift in your values system that you have experienced during the Venus retrograde. But Saturn is not going to let you move forward until certain changes are made. Okay. But therein lies where the resistance is really coming from, <laughs> because there is some fear involved with this Aries, and I'm going to get to that in a second. But Really, the true resistance that I'm feeling here for you obviously is egoic, but I'm getting kind of an energy of a parent and child, Saturn being that parent, you being the child, Aries being the child. And it's kind of a situation where it's like, you guys remember Stuart from, um, was that Mad TV? Yeah, I think it was Mad TV. I want to do it. Let me do it. <laughs> There's an energy here, Aries, of you kind of being resistant because Saturn is leading the way. Saturn is telling you what to do or the universe is telling you what to do. The universe is telling you what changes you need to make to get into alignment with this 
new life, this new goal, this fool, this this leap of faith here. And your ego is getting triggered, Aries, because you're like, why can't you? First of all, I heard, why can't you just let me do it my way? And second of all, it's like, don't tell me what to do. It's very Aries of you. <laughs> okay. This is your, this is definitely, this is definitely your ego getting in the way. All right. In terms of that. Now, what do we have here? That's just come out. Hmm. We have the page of wands. You are definitely on the verge of changing your identity, starting a new, um, creative project, changing the way you align, changing the way that you show up in the world, changing the way that you show up in society, for sure, changing the way that you or, or the message that you have for the collective or what it is you want to bring to the collective, what it is you want to create. And you want this is so this is so Aries energy. Okay, Aries really just wants to do things in him or herself wants to be the creator wants to wants to come up with the ideas and it and it feels like some of this or maybe at least some of you feel like this change is being imposed upon you and so that's triggering your ego saying like why can't you just let me figure it out why can't you just let me do it my way why are you telling me what to do I, you know i don't like it when you tell me what to do <laughs> Okay. For some of you though, this is also translating into business. And this is actually why some of you may be wanting to change careers or actually maybe go into business for yourself. All right. Which is definitely a good thing. Now there's also another form of fear that's coming through here. And that's kind of connected to what was happening in January. So in January, between the first of twenty, the, the first of January to the twenty fourth of January, we had a square between Neptune and Mars, and um, you specifically, and also most likely Scorpio, have been. Well, actually, yes, Scorpio was really was heavily affected by. It feels like heavy, Scorpio was heavily affected by the square between Neptune and Mars, but in a different way than you were. For you, Aries, I feel like the square between Neptune and Mars brought up a hell of a lot of fears, especially surrounding inadequacy or inability to follow through or inability to, to, to actually get it done or to be successful. And that is def, that is def, de, directly, excuse me, that's directly connected to some past experiences that you've had. Um, if you If you haven't watched, if you don't know what I'm talking about yet, I did do a video on the square between Mars and Neptune. I understand we're in February now, that square ended on the 24th of January, but go back and watch that video because that can help you explain some of the things that you're experiencing now. Because for you specifically, Aries, I feel like whatever came up for you during that aspect of Mars squaring up with Neptune, it is still kind of lingering for you moving into February. But again, it's directly connected to failures, failures you've experienced in the past, past conditioning surrounding your effectiveness, your ability to do the job, your ability to get things done, your virility, right? Um, it's it, it's directly connected to the change that you're needing to make right now. And some of those fears are kind of carrying over into this month. And it's almost as if with what's with what's going on here with the planets, because it, it's almost as if some of you feel it, some of you feel like you're backtracking a little bit. And one of the things that I wrote down here is don't allow yourself to get cold feet. Don't chicken out now. And I, I say that lovingly. I'm not trying to call you a chicken, but like for lack of a better term, don't chicken out. Don't get cold feet. Don't cut and run last minute because you think you can't do it. You can do it. Yes, it's scary, but you can do it. Okay, Aries, like if anybody can do it, you can. All right. Um, but you're definitely on the brink of this new adventure, the Fool and the Page of Wands. What can we say to Aries in terms of that now, especially for the fear involved in this? What can we say to Aries? What guidance? Something. Yes. There it is. Okay. We're going to talk about this for a hot second, Aries, because now the Four of Cups just came out. Why are you, I, I, I feel like you're reluctant to do this now for some reason. Let me make sure I have everything from my notes written down here. 
Okay. Okay. So let me talk about it this way. All right. So yes, like I said, Aries, you are on the verge of this new adventure, the fool to the page of wands. This is a powerful new beginning for you. Something that's very creatively charged or something that is very spiritually charged because the wands suit can represent spirit and spirituality. Okay. Um, the page of wands specifically also represents Sagittarius and there is a very strong Sagittarian archer like energy for this for you here, but I digress. Let me talk. Let me, let me start here. You have the four of cups. So yes, you are absolutely reluctant. Some of you are definitely getting cold feet. Um, and what I have written down here is I feel like this is heavily, or this is very much strongly connected to mercury being retrograde. Now, the, re the retrograde motion of Mercury started in January. It started on January 24th. It ends officially on the 6th of February. So entering into February by the 1st, we're still kind of experiencing the Mercury retrograde, but we're at the very end of it. For you, Aries, Mercury started in your 10th house, moved retrograde, is moving retrograde back into your ninth house. So this is, this is also another connection to the cancer reading, but this time it's cancer's reading for February. You might want to watch that reading. You might have a cancer placement, maybe a cancer sun or a cancer moon in which this would resonate for you. But for you, Aries, I feel like because of this reluctance, this four of cups energy, it, 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 because of this reluctance to really take the bull by the reins and fully act, and fully lean into dive into this new start some it some of you feels like you're you're backtracking and it feels like you're falling into the trap that your ego is laying saying I want to do it my way I know the good I know the best way to do this I'm the innovator I'm the path I'm the way shower I'm the path maker let me figure this out let me do this I know how to do this why can't you just let me do this my way? That's a trap, Aries. You have got to let your ego fall to the wayside by this, especially if your ego was heavily triggered during that Mars square Neptune situation. Some of you during that Mars square, square Neptune aspect, um, again, fears from the past or uh, past negative things or circumstances or things that you went after in the past, ways that you've acted, ways that you've reacted, ways that you respond to things, the actual method that you took to try and achieve certain things may have blown up in your face like crazy. And during that Mars square Neptune aspect, aspect that may have come back up to the surface for you to technically for you to heal it. But some of you are falling into the trap of, well, that happened last time, but if I can just get one more shot at it, I can make it happen again. Aries, or I can make it happen this time. But Aries, you're missing the point because it wasn't meant to happen that way. However you were going out about it before in the past was misaligned. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take all this. However, you were trying to go at it last time was misaligned here. You have overall energy is the nine of swords so far. I just got a whole stack of cards. So we're going to talk about this. The nine of swords is at the bottom of the deck. With that, you have the two of wands, which is talking about a decision to make in which direction to move forward in how to go about getting the work done or changing your career or whatever, eight of pentacles. But then you have the hanged man. The hanged man is absolutely specifically speaking to the elements or the ways that you have tried something in the past that didn't work out, but now your ego is flare flaring and saying, let me do it again. Let me just, let me just try again. I'm sure I can make it work this time. No, the universe is not going to let you. And with Mercury moving in retrograde here, I literally feel like this is Mercury, very similar to Cancer. This is Mercury pulling you back and saying, no, 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 no. And specifically pulling you back into the ninth house where all of this change in perspective is happening, the hanged man, okay? And it's pulling you back into that and reminding you of what it is that you've learned or what it is that you've experienced or how it is you are being influenced to shift Okay. The old way of doing things is an illusion. The sun has set on that. That's in the past. You have the moon 
and then you have the six of swords you really need to move forward and really ap approach your strength that just popped out your ego you have got to pull your ego back and allow the universe to guide you here okay the universe is not ultimately telling you giving you a full play by play on how to move forward here but there are some very specific instructions that you need to follow or at least a specific alignment that you need to get into because i also feel like with mercury having been retrograde it's pulling you back but that's also where i get the archer energy that i was speaking to which again is a very Sagittarian energy. And you, as an Aries rising, have Sagittarius in its home house of the ninth house, right? So this is full on, straight up, pure, unadulterated, unrefined, potentially, Sagittarian energy. And so Mercury in retrograde is pulling you back, maybe having you relearn some lessons or reconnect with some of the lessons that you have been learning over this time period, especially as Uranus has been retrograde in your home sign and house of Aries, right? And the first house. So reminding you of the lessons that you have been experiencing here, providing you with a time period to rewrite the programming and literally i'm seeing mercury pulling you back like an like a like a bow in the like an arrow in the bow getting ready to launch you forward when he goes direct and once you are launched forward in this way then you are at the wheel. Then you are driving the ship, Aries. Then it is upon you. You will get your time to lead the way, to do it your way, to figure it out on your own, to handle it on your own. But right now, the universe is trying to support you in getting into that alignment to, in order to do that, right? So you have got to, you've got to put your ego to the side, Aries, and allow spirit to really guide you here. Allow yourself to release these fears. Let's talk more about the fear because there's something, there's another way that this fear is being expressed for some of you. And um, like I said, Aries, for some of you, this has a lot to do with your business, with your job and with your career. Again, 10th house focus here, right? But for some of you, this is about Maybe you stepping into business for yourself, potentially. For some of you, I'm hearing finally, good. For others of you, this is about getting a promotion that is highly competitive and maybe even some of your friends, your colleagues, or people that you work with that are, maybe you would consider to be friends or close allies at least. Some of them are either up for this promotion as well or have put themselves in the running for it. And that's kind of part of where some of this lacking of caring what other people think about you came from for you in January. Because you had to stop for a moment and say, well, wait a second. Why should I not go after this position, go after this competitive new job or go after this promotion that's available that some of my friends want too, or some of my close allies, business colleagues want as well? Like, why shouldn't I go after that just because Paul over here says he wants it too and says he would never forgive me if he if I got it over him? Like, why should I sacrifice my success? just because somebody else wants it. And even if I were to get it over them or they were to get it over me, that doesn't mean we still can't be friends, right? Like, is that really how you see our relationship here? If that's the case, well, shit, game on, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so again, Aries, don't allow that to stop you. Don't, don't allow yourself to get cold feet here. If this is what you truly want, this is the time to do it, all right? The window of opportunity is opening up for you, is getting ready to open for you. What you just need to do is allow your ego to like fall back 
for a hot second, if you please. And let's just get into this alignment, please. And then you can take the wheel. <laughs> but ultimately, Aries, I think this is really, really good for you. This is really good for you. This is this is a really beautiful new opportunity for you here. I'm not, I'm, you see, I've been sitting here for the last like 20 minutes trying to pull and see if I can get some more cards here, but nothing's really coming out. Um, except for now. Wow. Okay. This feels like it's the closing message here for you from the Tarot. All right. Because I have at this point, I believe I've gotten through all of my notes for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do want to reiterate this one point one more time, though, Aries. If you want to step into the life of a certain public image or a career or business opportunity that you want, then you have to take this step. You have to take this leap of faith, specifically, is what I just heard. Okay, Aries. Now, closing message for you from the Tarot here. is the Wheel of Fortune to the Seven of Pentacles. And this is directly connected to what I just said. If you want change, Aries, then you're just gonna have to do it. And it's funny because like you, of all the cardinal signs, I will say, I will absolutely say, because I definitely share this energy with you in sidereal astrology, I'm an Aries son, all right? So I get it. But you, out of all of the cardinal signs, are the most driven towards change, or at least you are the first to jump up and say, hey, let's do something new, or hey, that's new, let's do it. I'll lead the way, I'll take the charge. Great. So why are we not doing that now? Seven of Pentacles to the Wheel of Fortune. If you want change, then you have to let go of some, if not all, of the way that you've been doing things up until now. Wheel of Fortune to the Seven of Pentacles. And at the bottom of the deck, Aries, there you are, none other than the Emperor. See, underneath, you have at the bottom of the deck here, overall energy, you have the Emperor, underneath that is the, the Devil, underneath that is the Page of Pentacles, and then underneath that is the Empress. And then underneath the Empress is the Three of Cups and Judgment. Okay. The Three of Cups here kind of could represent society, sure. But actually for you specifically, Aries, the Three of Cups feels like it represents the union of, of body, mind, and spirit or the union of masculine, feminine, and inner child. And that's actually what we have a representation of here with these other cards that are at the overall uh, that are the overall energy at the bottom of the deck now is the time for this three of cups to judgment now is the time for you to move forward in ways that reflect this union of masculine feminine and inner child energies however something is standing in the way of that you have the feminine and the inner child uh their game they're on board the Empress to the Page of Pentacles. But where's the masculine? Wrapped up in fear. The Emperor with the Devil. The Devil, the Devil, Aries, is literally what is standing in the way between you coming together or truly aligning and taking action from this alignment of the three. The, the feminine, the inner child, and the masculine. So literally, the only missing piece of this puzzle for you right now, Aries, is the action. The alignment is set. The alignment is there. It's ready to go. All you got to do is just sink into it. All you got to do is to allow yourself to release the fear. Nope, wrong one. Where's the fear? Where's the, there? There's the fear. Don't release the child. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, Aries. <laughs> okay, release the fear. And allow this divine union of masculine, feminine, and inner child. The inner child speaks to your creativity, your exuberance, your excitement, your belief that anything is possible, right? Allow these three to come together. And quite frankly, Aries, next month, March, well, actually, no, this month, 
This month, we actually have Mars and Venus, the masculine and the feminine coming together, right? Aligning in their conjunction, and then they move forward together. And then by next month, by March 3rd, we have the conjunction between Pluto with Venus and Mars already conjuncted together. So it's a three planet conjunction and that is the blast off point for us. And that is really, I feel like if you allow this union to come together, Aries, it could, it, it could seriously change your life, the wheel of fortune. I personally, I just heard some of you are literally staring this change in your life this great new great on alignment or whatnot, whatever, you're literally staring it in the face right now. And maybe you don't even know it. All right, I'm gonna close out this part of the reading with Oracle Guidance from the Magic of Unicorns Oracle, yeah? Three shuffles here. One. Two. And three. All right, closing guidance for Aries Rising for February of 2022. <laughs> okay. So at the bottom of the deck, you have overall energy of card number 20, rose gold cosmic pool. Bathe in cosmic love, soak up wisdom. And really the big message that I'm getting from this card, Aries, is the, the, the battle, the struggle that your ego is having right now. Um, and I get that from all the animals that are on this card. And that to me says that there are so many opportunities to learn. Something or someone, particularly children, of course, could possess something that you need to learn from even if it doesn't necessarily look like it in the on the surface don't let your ego keep you from soaking up the lessons and the wisdom that can come from an infinite amount of sources okay but finally the last card you have here is card number seven listen to your heart awaken psychic abilities and tune into the infinite Tune into the infinite really stands out here. There is no one way to do things, Aries. There are multiple infinite ways to do things, to get the job done, to end up where you want to be or need to be, whatever. And yes, you are in the driver's seat. You are in control of your life. Nobody can tell you what to do. Not even the universe. The universe can strongly suggest it but if you choose or end up choosing not to get into alignment with it, then then that's on you because things are still going to move forward. And, and you, if you choose not to allow the universe to help you with your aim, with your focus, with your alignment, to put you in the position to go after what it is you wanted to go after to begin with, then you're just going to be stuck in the same old energy, the same old cycle. Okay. So open up to the infinite, allow your ego to be guided at least for right now. <laughs> okay. Aries, I love you. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to pause for a moment, recollect myself, and we will get into the second half of this reading, which will just be a big old general card pull for the collective of Aries. Yeah, stay tuned. Hey guys. All right. So welcome to the second half of this general reading for Aries for February of 2022. If you have skipped the first half, hello, welcome. Happy February to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So this half of the reading is non-denominational. Okay. So it does not matter what form of astrology you practice. Um, this is just a big old general card pull for the collective energy of Aries. So this could resonate with any placement that you have in Aries, including, but not limited to your sun, moon, rising, Venus, whatever. Um, this also could be the section of the reading that would be most applicable to a cross watcher. So keep that in mind. This is a general reading and the roles could very well be reversed. 
let's get into this Aries. Um, I just want to, I want to start with the tarot for you here. Five shuffles. One. Two. For Aries. What messages do we have for Aries at this time? Holy Spirit, this is three for February of 2022. This is four. Aries, February. Five. All right, Aries. So what's going on for you? February of 2022. What do we have for Aries? All right, Aries, <clears throat> we seem to be having a little bit of an ego flare this month. First card out for you was Justice, uh, followed by the Page of Swords. However, I have been instructed, guided to take the Page of Swords in reverse, and that kind of makes sense because as I was looking at Justice and tuning into that energy, I was getting an image and a feeling of the universe coming in and trying to balance the scales for you. Um, which is going to bring justice into your life. I don't get this strong feeling like you're being punished or anything, but I do get the feeling that that might be what you think is happening. You're being punished. You're being reprimanded. You're getting a slap on the wrist or something by the universe here. And the read the only reason that is happening, Aries, is because you keep coming through saying, well, I'm sure there's a better way. I know a better way. I can assure you, Aries, if the universe is coming through and saying, no, this is the better way, you're better off just listening to the universe because I promise you, I promise you, Aries, no matter what your ego is telling you, you don't know better than the universe. The universe has a higher perspective than all of us down here. I mean, our perspective of reality doesn't even scratch, does I mean, barely even scratches the surface, right? There is a better way, but Aries, you're being led to it. You're being guided to it. Overall energy at this point, yes, look at this, is the Ten of Swords, but then underneath the Ten of Swords is the Six of Swords. Ten of Swords to the Six of Swords to the Four of Swords. You've just got to allow yourself to chill for a second, okay? I understand you're action driven. I understand you want to do all the things. I understand there is an energy here for you. Like, like I said to Aries Rising, there was this energy of, um, of, of Stuart. Do you guys remember Stuart, the character from, I believe it's Mad TV? I want to do it. Let me do it. Right? I feel like Aries is kind of having a temper tantrum a little bit this month because their ego is being told that the way that it wants to go is not necessarily the best way. There is in fact a better way. And what you're needing to, and even though you're standing there like, well, why can't you just let me do it my way? Because again, the universe is saying there is a better way, a much easier way. And I feel like it actually, whatever the universe is pushing you towards Aries, it's actually, be, actually going to be way easier and I'm feeling specifically there's, it's going to result in way less friction than if you try and force your own way here. There is a much easier way. So Aries, all you're really needing to do is just fall back, four of swords, and allow the universe to navigate the ship at this time, six of swords. And the navigation is bringing you to the end of the old cycle, the pain, the pain, what not, whatever, ten of swords. Once you reach that destination, once you reach your port here, six of swords, right? That's when you can step into the driver's seat again. That's when you can say, all right, we're going this way. 
great. That is what the universe is setting you up for. I think that's what you're missing. If you're really having a big ego problem with this, if you're really feeling triggered by this, and 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 let me just say at this point that I'm not trying to trivialize this. I'm not trying to mock you. I'm not trying to offend you. I'm I'm not trying to treat you like a child even. Um like I under I understand how legit this actually could be for you right now. And I and I and, I, and it's not trivial. It's not trivial, Aries. However, the universe is literally setting you up to be the masterful manifester or creator or doer that you truly are. All right. Now, this big ego flare, I said this in Aries Rising, but I'll say it again. But maybe you want to watch the Aries Rising, Rising video be, or part of the video because that if you're really resonating with this message, that could help you get a little bit of a, um, of a deeper understanding. But two points that are kind of affecting this for you. One was the Mars Neptune square that happened back in January. Mars is your ruling planet. You and Scorpio probably felt this the strongest. Scorpio is feeling it a little different than you. For you, Aries, I feel like that square between Mars and Neptune brought up a lot of fears, a lot of egoic fears, a lot of um, memories of past circumstances that were that failed, past adventures or endeavors that failed, certain ways that you went about something, you approached something, you took actions towards something, you you reacted to something, you certain ways that you responded to something, whatever, are cringeworthy or left you with a wildly less than desirable result for some of you, right? And some of that energy, even though that square between Mars and Neptune ended on the 24th of January, some of that fear is actually being carried into the next phase or what's moving next for you because now you have the opportunity to try and do something again. But because of the fears that came up during that square, your ego is flaring, your sense of pride even is flaring, I'm hearing. And you're saying, in some cases, you're saying, well, I know it didn't work that way. I know I know, I went about it that way last time and it didn't work. But if you just let me try one more time, I'm sure I can get it to work this time. No, Aries. <laughs> I'm hearing that is defeating the purpose of this whole process to begin with. Because there is a new alignment that you are reaching that's actually going to make a lot of these things come easier, come faster, actually be successful this time. So quite frankly, oh, and then the other, the second aspect to this is the Mercury retrograde that I feel like has been kind of, has pulled you back a little bit. Whereas some of you were trying to go about this from the point of view of your ego and Mercury retrograde pulled you back and said, oh, no, you don't come back here, come back from your 10th house for Aries rising, come back and from your 10th house into your ninth house, into that philosophy, into that expanded awareness, into that Sagittarian energy where Venus has been retrograde for in for all of us in Sagittarius, changing our alignment with our values, right? Come back into that, realign with this, rework this programming, rewrite this programming, and then as you do that, I'm going to be like the archer and I'm going to load you into the bow and I'm going to pull and pull and pull. I'm going to get you set and then boop, we're going to let you go. Fly off to take the action you want to take. So I understand the resistance, Aries, but you have got to let the universe line this up for you. That's literally all you have to do. The job is yours to complete to begin with, or you wouldn't be here, Aries. You wouldn't be here in this incarnation, in this life, having this experience, going through this alignment process. The job is yours anyway, but allow the universe to set you up for higher potential for success. What else do we have for Aries for the month?
No, oh, Aries, 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 Aries. You have just got to let the old path go. You have some really beautiful energies that have come out here for you next. The first card that came out is the Queen of Cups. And with that, I heard, okay, but feelings. Okay, but emotion. Okay, but my feelings are hurt. My sense of pride is hurt. Followed by King of Swords. I'm gonna be honest with you, Aries, with this I heard, so the fuck what? Dude, fuck your feelings right now. Because you have a new opportunity that's coming to you. You're being presented with this new opportunity. And no, Aries, King of Swords, it is what it is, objective way of thinking, okay? Uh, Aquarius energy, Uranus moving retrograde through Aries. Uranus is associated with Aquarian energy. It is what it is, Aries. And you have just got to accept the fact that the old path, the old way you wanted to do it, the old way that you thought you were gonna get it done or whatnot, whatever, has just got to be let go of. You have the moon to the two of wands to the star. The star represents your wishes, your hopes, your dreams. The two of wands represents a choice in how to go about that. But the moon represents that something is hidden. Something is illusionary. Something is not in alignment. And I really strongly feel, Aries, that that is connected to the way that you thought you were going to be going about this. And then you have with that the Five of Wands, which is the internal conflict, which is the differing of opinion, which is the bickering back and forth, the arguing with the universe or with yourself, the, the constant but, 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 or what if, what if, what if, or what about this, or what about that, and but, but, but. It's like, no, just stop. Just stop, Aries, because you're being handed a new opportunity to get things done. Overall energy is the Ace of Swords with the, tr the truth. The Ace of Swords. It's clear as bright as day. The King of Swords, the judge has spoken. The judge has heard and seen all of the evidence, has heard all of the different points of view, has seen this six ways sideways or like has seen each and every bit of nook and cranny that he could see. There is nothing left to see here. The verdict has been made. And that verdict, verdict is Aries. You have got to walk away from the old path. Now, just because, Aries, just because there is a new way of going about it, it still doesn't mean that it's gonna happen overnight. Underneath the Eight of Cups at the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Pentacles, but underneath the Knight of Pentacles is the Chariot. You will get there, Aries, should you really allow the universe to, to, to help you settle into the alignment that will get you there. Okay. I don't mean to sound insensitive. Fuck your feelings. But really, the feelings that are coming up here for you is just a representation of this ego battle, okay? Closing Oracle guidance for you, Aries, for, J for February, excuse me, is going to come from the Oracle of the Seven Energies. Yes? Five shuffles. One. To close out this reading for my Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Two. Closing Oracle Guidance for you for February of 2022. Okay. Card number 28 is at overall energy at the bottom. It's broken open. I feel like your potential is actually being broken wide open. There is something about some sort of alignment that your ego has going on here that was restrictive to you. And this process of alignment that the universe is, 
excuse me, is pulling you through right now is actually breaking you wide open and releasing more of your potential. That's why this actually is a better way for you to go because you have more access to your source of material. I just heard you have, you're in greater alignment with yourself. So your energy can flow easier and thus we're leading you towards bearing fruit this time. Bearing fruit, card number 12 is your last card. What I'm hearing is focus, in, focus on this energy because this energy is going to help you bear fruit this time. Instead of just arbitrarily growing some sort of crop or some sort of, I don't know, let's say you were trying to grow a pear tree. But the environment in which you were trying to grow it or the method by which you were trying to go it, grow it is not conducive for that fruit, for that tree to grow and to flourish and to ultimately bear fruit for you. But this new alignment is if you just allow yourself to settle into it, if you allow yourself to take the window of opportunity that is available to you at this time or is becoming available to you at this time. Okay. All right, Aries, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you are new here, please consider subscribing. Smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below, letting me know how this resonates for you and share it with your friends. Yeah, I am available for personal readings. All of the information can be found in the description box below. Just shoot me an email. Let me know that you're looking for a reading and I'll get you all set up. And also, if you would like some extra content from me throughout the month, or if you would like to uh, just support the channel, definitely check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can also be found in the description box below. I love you all so much. I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yes. Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>